Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel, Germany. You thought I forgot about you. I did not. Deutschland Diner Tour Stage 1 starts in Stralsund, which is near or on the Baltic Sea, which meant we got some boat and sailor action in the pre-race media stuff. Comment down below, what is Mark Soler carrying here? Is that the pot of gold or bag of cash or barrel rather that UAE have given him for the years to come? Movistar looking rather fetching in their hat as well as Andre Greipel with a bit of banter for teammate Chris Froome on Israel Startup Nation. And in fact, Greipel, the star of the show here, and there's good sprint field with Cavendish, Ackerman, Degenkolb on the German national team. Because this parkour goes very close or through actually where Andre Greipel was born. A sprint stage, 191 k's long from Stralsund to Schwerin, and it has the first intermediate sprint at Rostock. So it goes southwest could be windy, where well, there would be windy conditions on this stage, quite a flat area, but a lot of wind, and certainly looking rather cold, particularly for August. A breakaway went with Bike Aid rider Justin Wolf. He's a big unit, strong guy, and Bike Aid, you might not know them, but they're a Conti team, uh, a German Conti team, and they've done well at races like Sibiu Tour, multiple years in a row. They generally punch above their weight and have some very strong riders, but they were being kept in check by Bora Hansgrohe for Sprint Pass. Pascal Ackerman, Bahrain victorious for their sprint to Bauhaus, who is on fine form this year, and De Kony Quickstep for Mark Cavendish. So it's going to be looking like a sprint. The only issue would be the crosswinds. You can see on the right-hand side, the wind was blowing pretty hard for a lot of the day, and Bora Hansgrohe, probably the best team actually at managing that. They have Niels Pollard in their team. Bookman is here, but the parkour doesn't really suit Bookman for GC. GC, almost Davide Formolo and maybe Almeida, given how well he did at Tour de Pologne, could be guys there's some punchy stages later on even today there's a little hill at the end but it's not for those guys probably more like a Niels Pollitt Remy Cavagna late attack I might think today but you could see the peloton trying to manage those crosswinds here Niels Pollitt of course on the front with Greipel behind him as well as Adalset on the right hand side Haller is just in front of Pascal Ackermann who's not pulling through but being kept at the front and safe by his teammates he's got Schwarzman there Rudiger Zelig who I think is going to Lotto Sudal next year the veteran lead out man but the breakaway was fighting for the sort of KOM points it wasn't a long climb it's kind of like the Tour of Denmark the other week like the KOM point was on like a 1% rise but Justin Wolf and this break weren't to be underestimated maybe you could say the peloton managed it really well which they did in the end they'd catch them with about three or three and a half k's to go but it did require a lot of the sprinters teams chipping in to chase and you can see in the running that the kind of quick step weren't ordered as maybe you would expect Yannick Steimler on the left hand side is Lamp part there on the bottom and then Mark Cavendish on the right hand side that you can see Israel a 1-2-3 at the front Bahrain are forming up on the left hand side so maybe that was a premonition for issues to come for Mark Cavendish who was caught out of position and I didn't know does anyone know were you know X going for Christopher Halverson or Rasmus Tiller in this sprint because Halverson he has like the talent and pedigree he was at EF but Rasmus Tiller's the man on fire this year and there was a crash with 2.8 kilometers to go and Mark Cavendish, this is him, right? He wasn't caught up in the crash. He was deep in the field and out of position. But he looks like he might even be able to sprint back on to the back of the group at this point. But he wasn't really able to contest the sprint at all. And to be honest, even if he did get back on, you know, trying to move up that far with no teammates in front of you is virtually impossible because his teammate Remy Cavagna in the French national champs jersey was drilling it on the front. And you can see Yannick Steimler is on his wheel. And Lampard at this point certainly knows that he's going to try and contest the sprint. I'm not sure if... Steimler eventually does find out. And we've got a twisty run in with a right, a left. The last left hand corner is like 500 meters to go. But you see through this chicane, Schwarzman pulls off for Bora Hansgrohe out from in front of Rudiger Zelig. So already problems for Ackerman in terms of not being dropped off too early, as well as Remy Cavagna. You can see he's pointing to Steimler your turn to pull what are you doing and Steinler just keeps pushing him through Cavagna looks doesn't see Cavendish and tries to continue but he's kind of cooked so Haller on the right hand side and Rudiger Zelig on the left hand side well Zelig brings up Ackerman quite well Haller doesn't have Bauhaus on his wheel at this point and so Bauhaus gets caught on Yannick Steimler's wheel. He's got Haller then in front of him. And Haller actually slots onto Ackerman's wheel through this corner. So Rudiger Zelig hit that corner with a lot of speed. He's got Ackerman on the wheel. The problem is that corner is not so close to the finish. And same old, same old story with 316 meters to go off the graphic on the left-hand side is to be believed. 
Rudiger Zelig pulls off and he pulls off completely and stops pedaling. He doesn't keep at least pedaling to offer Ackerman another 50 or 60 meters despite no one jumping from behind and he also pulls off so far that it doesn't allow Ackerman to just move up on the right hand side and stay on the barriers which you often see Merku do. So Ackerman launches very early and he has to do a full 20 second sprint and this is the thing I don't know because uh, I actually wasn't a world tour sprinter. What can Ackerman do in that position? He has to launch, otherwise people will come around him. In this stage, it didn't matter because he's so much better than Bauhaus, who was caught out of position, and Steimler and Lampard are nowhere on his level. He wins the stage anyway with a 20-second full sprint out of the saddle. And you might be saying, oh, well, that's... He's, he's back at a better level. He's winning now. He's obviously coming into form at the end of the year. And I just don't agree with that. I think at UAE Tour, right at the start of the year... It had nothing to do with legs. I made a long video about this before the Tour de France when he wasn't picked. And, you know, you look at UAE Tour Stage 7, for example, it's the opposite of what happened. Martin Lars, he lost his wheel, and Ackerman's behind Bauhaus couldn't even open up his sprint when Ewan beat Bennett at the end. He was just caught behind the wheels. I don't even think, might, might not even come top 10. You can see him just, there's no space for him here. So that's the opposite of what happened today. So is that his fault for losing the last wheel? Is it lead out's fault? Probably his fault. Contrast that with UAE Stage 4, which is much similar to what we saw in Deutschland Diner Tour yesterday. He got dropped off by last, and he started his sprint with 275 meters to go. And you can't tell me that he's not doing good power here to stay out in front the way he did. The problem was he launched against Ewan Bennett Nizzolo with 275 meters to go, and you just can't win in that situation. But I don't really have the answer. Could he have followed or stayed on Martin last wheel for another two, three seconds in that situation? Probably not. He'd probably get jumped by Kay's ball on the right-hand side. Could he or should he have waited to open up his sprint a bit longer yesterday? I guess he saw he had Haller on the wheel. So without Bauhaus on the wheel, that actually, him jumping early, really put Bauhaus in a difficult position, particularly when Cavendish wasn't there. But it'll be interesting to see how he goes at UA next year. They've got a host of sprinters trying to reclaim their best level. Arkerman, Gaviria, Alvaro, Hodge. I wouldn't say they've had the best leadouts in the world this year, UAE Team Emirates. But yeah, good to see Arkerman winning once again. He takes the stage and, of course, the leader's jersey in the finish in Schwerin, finishing ahead of Phil Bauhaus, Marco Haller, Yves Lampard, Yannick Steinler, David van der Poel, Luca Mozzato, Jens Rehn. Anders, Marco Canola and Kim Huido. If you want to watch Deutschland Diner Tour, you can see the list of broadcasters in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope Andre Greipel can do well or show himself at some point in this race, retiring at the end of this year, as well as, of course, Marcel Seberg, the long-standing German leader man on Bahrain victorious. But until today's recap, which will probably drop tomorrow, ciao.